from the hills of the just plateau nigeria comes the cry for the rebirth of a new africa to stop afrophobia oh yo yo africa global initiative welcomes africa and africa in diaspora africa the future we have waited for is now my name is Obadukun Thompson. I am the alumni of Etioni in Oshun State in Nigeria. My name is Camille Brown. My name is Kristen Hopkins, CEO and founder of Dangers of the Mind. Hi everyone, this is Margaret Mozache and I come from South Africa. I'm Senator Heidi Gien, uh, Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Hello Africa, tell me how you're doing. <laughs> My name is Pearl Coupe and I'm so excited to be a part of Oyoyo Africa Global Initiative. Oyoyo African Global Initiative. The Oyoyo Africa Global Initiative. I encourage all of you, let's support the Oyagi Initiative. Let's get behind them as they bring this conference, seminars, workshops, and the people of Africa together so we can make a better world and we win together. We're so excited to partner with Oyoyo Global Initiative Africa to be able to stop Afrophobia. This event will be life-changing. It will be just what Africa needs, and we're going to ignite the resilience in our people and unite and bring peace to Africa. It is about a movement against Afrophobia. This is the time for Africa to seize the moment. And I call on you to come together with me for us to be part of this great epoch-making event. It's not just an event, it is a movement. And it is the beginning of a new Africa. We are all that we have, and we are all Africa. Please join us. Arise, unite, and stop something. We'll be coming up in Nigeria shortly and we need to come together to support whatever they're doing to bring Africa together. I will be in Abuja on the 13th and the 14th of December. Come join us on December 13th and 14th as we're calling all government officials, private firms, and stakeholders. People in diaspora, I invite people from Zambia, and Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and everywhere to come together be united, talk peace, talk love, because it will be a great recipe for our unity. NAV Conference Center, 13th and 14th December, looks forward to receiving all Africans, both here in diaspora and in the different countries of the continent. Look out for it, 13th, 14th December. Be there. Bye. Time I remember that morning when he was to go to work. <coughs> you know, if you see the Nigerian colors, when the president of Nigeria is standing, you see two flags behind them. You have the green, white, green flag, and you have the, the colored flag stand behind them. The colored flags are the, 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 his authority as commander of the Nigerian Armed Forces. Now, by our constitution and any other country at all, there's no point, at any point, you have two commanders of the Armed Forces, you have anarchy. And it is the duty of the military to stop that. That fateful morning in Nigeria, where the Duke President Jonathan was leaving as acting president, the Nigerian colors, the black, the green, white, green was flying, and the flag of the commander in chief was flying, flying. On his car, the staff car, you had the Nigerian flag and the flag of the commander in chief parked in front of his house. And then in the night, President Yalada was flown home. And on the side of the president's building, the commander in chief's flag was raised. And the Nigerian flag was flying. 
Then you have the, the vehicle that brought the former president back had the staff flags on it. And then it was a Wednesday. So there is no way. You remember, if you think back, the executive council was to be in session. And President Jonathan was to go to the Federal Executive Council. So how was he going to go? <laughs> was he going to drive the staff car? Remove the flag of the commander in chief and drive through the gates of the president? Or was he going to fly the commander in chief's flag and approach the gate of the president with the brigade of guard, standing guard? It was one of the classics of Nigerian history that people have not heard. What did President Jonathan do? How was it possible that anarchy did not drop on Nigeria that day? For me, every time I remember that moment, it gives me goose pimples. And I want you people to let that penetrate you. That morning, you know what President Jonathan did? He came out and said to his uh, ugly, remove the Nigerian flag, remove the flag of the commander in chief, put it inside the car, and let us go to work. He became neutral. And that was the only way he could pass that gate into the chamber. Humility, that disposition to be neutral, that disposition to make himself smaller, that amazing capacity to mellow down in the face of all manner of pressure is the immeasurable gift that God has bestowed this country in the person of Jonathan. So I thank all of you for recognizing that. I also thank you immensely for choosing the topic of stopping Africa from disintegration. I can assure you, today marks an unbelievable step in the history of Africa. This step will not push back. This initiative is unique, current, well thought through, and I'm listening to the people you have assembled here. It's backed by minds that are deep, coordinated, and willing to listen and to communicate in very well articulated way. So let me assure you, that I am very happy and very proud to be privileged to be here. On behalf of His Excellency, because I know that when I get back to him and tell him what happened here, he would wish that he was here all day. So thank you very much. Stay focused, stay coordinated, keep in pace. I am happy that I'm here. You have offered me the privilege of my life. So as a person, I would like to be part of the Royal Africa. If you will grant me that personal privilege. Because I think that you are focusing on something that all of us should be staying awake to do. So may God guide your steps. 
and please receive the love of His Excellency, President Jonathan. Africa, the future we have waited for is now.